All right, my friends, I'm uh, going to look at a couple things today. Um, I would take these notes on the blank page, at which uh, 162 would be a really good place to put this. We're going to look at two things today. We're going to look at, the, look at the ideal gas law, which lets you keep track of properties of a, of a, of a gas. And we're also going to look at something called gas cycles. So we're going to be learning to read something called a PV diagram to learn um, what's happening to gases trapped in a container. Right. So um, right up at the top, I would just put this, uh, the ideal gas law. Um, so the ideal gas law is uh, written as PV equals NRT. That's the version that you see in chemistry. Um, and what the P stands for, that is the pressure of the gas. So in physics, we're going to measure that pressure in pascals, um, which is the same thing as a newton per meter squared. Um, and in chemistry, you tend to use atmospheres. Um, in Volumes in physics, we're going to tend to use the base unit of the cubic meter, um, where the chemists like to use little smaller chunks of stuff, so they'll tend to do it in liters. Um, but it's good to know how to handle both. Um, so we're going to tend to stay with um, pascals and meters cubed, though. Um, this character N stands for the number of moles. So one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. Um, so you're usually talking about molecules or atoms um, for that many things. Um, this R is a gas constant. Now here's where you'll have to make some choices. And it just depends on which system of units you're using. So we uh, here in AP Physics 2 are going to tend to use um, basic metric system units. So we'll be in pascals and meter cubed. So this is going to be your gas constant, uh, 8.31. You'll be in pascals and cubic uh, meters per mole Kelvin. Where in chemistry, you tend to use liters and atmospheres. So you'll use this bottom one. And the little thing to watch out for is with the temperature, is your temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Um, so this ideal gas law won't work unless the, um, the temperature is in Kelvin. So that's why I put a big skull and crossbones there. Now a little version of this that we're not going to use nearly as much is um, if instead of talking about the number of moles, if you want to work with the number of molecules, um, then you could actually write this ideal gas law as instead of PV equals NRT, it can be PV equals capital N KT, um, where this K is that Boltzmann constant that we met um, from the definition of temperature, 3 halves KT. Um, so um, you'll see this sometimes, and it's sitting there on your formula sheet, um, but we tend to just um, use this version of it. I'll use this version much more, um, but that's, that's there if you need it. It's not really any different. It just depends on whether you're working with moles or number of molecules, right? So that's the ideal gas law. You just basically need to know, well, two of the three things out of P, V, and T, and so you can learn how the pressure, volume, and temperature of a gas are related, okay? Okay. Uh, We'll practice using this guy a little bit more later. Um, one thing I do want to put on your radar, though, thing to keep track of is the bigger P, the product of PV and P and V are, that means the bigger T is. So that's something to watch out for. If this combination of pressure and volume is big, that means that the temperature is high. Right? Um, so now kind of the most important thing for today. Um, let me give you guys a second to quick make a little sketch of this. Um, and so what you want to do is draw a pressure versus volume graph. So I'm talking slow here so you get a chance to draw it. Um, so um, down here, just put three notches on the pressure. Um, for now, it's not going to matter what the units are. We're just going to need to know whether the pressure goes up or down. So just make three little notches. And then on the volume, same thing, just make three little notches. We just need to know whether the volume went up or down. And what we're going to do is show the gas going through a little cycle. So there's going to be process one where it does this, process two where it does this, and process three where it does this. So just take a second and draw this graph out. And what we're going to do is look at, for each one of these processes, we're going to look at um, these three parts of the first law of thermo. So what we're going to try to do is learn, say, for process one, like what's the sign of the change in internal energy of the gas? Um, what's the sign of, of heat flow, whether heat flowed in or out? And what's the sign of the work on the system, um, whether work was done on the gas or by the gas? So the thing to remember with this, with looking at the signs, is you, you want to figure out, to get the sign of the change in energy, Really, you're just looking at whether the temperature went up or down. And a thing to remember is if PV is big, then the temperature is big. 
Um, so for example, what we'll get to see in a moment here is on process one, since the um, product of, of pressure and volume goes up, um, right, pressure here would be like three units and volume is three units, so three times three would be like nine here, but pressure and volume, it would be three times one when you're here. Um, so the product of pressure and volume is simply bigger when you're here. So what we'll see in a moment is the change in internal energy is going to be positive because the temperature went up on process one. So we'll see that. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, as far as heat flow, you just need to know whether heat went flowed in or out. So if heat flowed in, um, then the Q in is positive. If the heat flowed out, then the Q in is negative because it went out. And, and then finally for the work done, work is done on a gas if you squeeze it. Uh, or if the volume went down and work is done by a gas if it got bigger. Um, so the only thing you're going to look at to know if uh, work was done on the gas, um, in, in which case the work on would be positive, is if it got squeezed or not. Um, all right, so you look at whether the thing compressed or expanded. Um, well, so here we go. So just as a quick example, so let's do this. So we'll go nice and slow. It says uh, process one. Well, so what you do is you can see on process one, what's happening is our pressure staying constant, but the volume's getting bigger. So the gas is like expanding, it's growing. That you can imagine the piston moving like this to expand the gas. Right, so the gas expanded, but the pressure stayed constant. Okay. Um, so what we can say then, since the gas expanded, straight away what that means, since the gas expanded, is the work on the gas is negative. Because Gas did work on the environment. So work's only done on the gas if you squeeze it. But this went the other way. Um, so straight away for process one, we learned that the work on the gas was negative. Okay, so check on that one. Um, now the thing to think about as far as the heat flow is the gas canister got bigger. Now usually when you let a gas expand, it should have cooled down. Um, right? But what we notice is that it did not. It didn't. Um, it it actually maintained this constant pressure even though you let it expand, um, and so somebody must be like holding a flame under it or making heat go in, um, and so Q in is going to be positive since the heat went in, right? The the volume grew, but the pressure stayed the same. Well, it's like how can that be? How can the molecule still be banging on the wall just as hard and just as often if you? Um, if you let the volume expand. So somebody must have held a flame under this thing. So we know heat flowed in. Um, and then finally, as far as the change in energy, well, what I would just look at is, well, what happened to the temperature? Because temperature alone tells you about the change in energy. Um, again, the product of P and V is bigger here than here. Well, so the product of P and V went up, so the temperature must have gone up. Um, so delta E is going to be positive. So that's how you look at one of these things. All right, let's, um, again, we'll do the same thing for the last two processes. Um, so let's do process two and then process three. Um, so let's go with process two. And if you really noticed what happened is the volume stays constant. So notice it does not compress or expand. So what we're going to say is, is uh, the volume stayed constant. So no work's going to be done. Um, volume stays constant. Um, but the pressure drops. Now you really want to stop and imagine this. You have this canister of gas and it just stays like this, but the pressure goes down. Well, how can you do that? How can the volume, how can the volume stay constant, but the pressure goes down? The only way around that or the way to make that happen is the gas must have cooled down. So what's kind of funny is there's kind of hidden information there. It's like, oh, weird. You're sitting there with this canister and the pressure just starts to drop but without a change in volume, so that means it, it definitely cooled. Um, so on process two, just a couple things we can jot down. The gas cooled at constant volume, right? Notice the volume did not change. Well, so what does that mean? Well, since it's constant volume, there was no expansion or compression, so um, there's no work. The work on the gas is zero because um, the only way to do work on the gas is to squeeze it. So work on the gas is zero. Now let's talk about heat flow. Um, well, the gas, the gas cooled down. The pressure, the pressure dropped while we were at constant volume. Um, well, so heat must have left. That's the only, that's the only way around it. Um, and so the Q in is going to be negative, um, since heat left the system. Um, and 
Well, since there was no work done, but yet the heat left the system, so you can say, okay, the, the work on was zero, but the heat flow was negative, so you have negative thing plus zero is going to give you a negative thing. Um, and so what that means is the change in uh, internal energy of the gas is going to be negative. Um, another way to see this is the product of P and V went down. So that's, an, that's another way to do it. Um, finally, let's do process three. Only thing I can, there's a, kind of a lot changing on process three. One thing, though, I can say right away is it was definitely compressed. The volume reduced. It had a big volume, and now it's got a small volume. So we definitely compressed it. Um, so the gas was compressed. So work was done on the gas. We know that right away. Um, so we squeezed it. Um, now, to learn about temperature, again, I mentioned you can look at the product of P and V. Well, here you have kind of V being three units and P being one unit. So the product of P and V would be kind of like three times one. So product of P and V is like three here. But the same is true here. Here the pressure is three units, but the volume is only one. So three times one will also give you three units. So the, um, the product of P and V actually stays the same. That means our temperature stayed the same. Um, so, so the funny thing is you notice here we squeezed it. But the temperature stayed the same. Now, normally when you squeeze it, um, normally that makes temperature go up, but it did not. Um, so that means when you squeezed it, some heat must have left. Um, so that's why we'll say on this one, um, the, the Q in is negative. You squeezed it, but it didn't get hotter. So heat must have left. So Q in is negative. And then for reasons I talked about a moment ago, it has the same product of pressure and volume. Um, so it's got the same temperature. Right? So one little thing for you all to play with, that's, that is how you read uh, gas cycles. What I want to have you guys do, similar process. Um, here's another little gas cycle. Let me move me out of the way. Here's another little gas cycle um, where it goes A, B, C, D, A. Um, and so what I want you guys to do is look at these four processes, A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A and try to figure out the signs of all these things. Again, the only thing you look at for work is whether you compressed or expanded. The only thing you look at for heat flow, um, did heat go in or out? So if heat goes in, it's positive. And then for change in internal energy, you just got to look at the temperature um, or the product of P and V. Um, so, so take a moment and try to do this for this little, um, for this little process. So I would... I'm, I would pause the video, take a moment to draw this diagram, um, and pause this video, and see if you can get the signs of these things. All right? Um, so please do push pause and give it a try. I'll move on and give some answers here in a second, but it's really helpful if you stop and think about it a bit. All right, hopefully you're not cheating and you pause the video. Uh, so let's try this. Um, so what we're going to do is find the signs of all these things for each process. So first process is A to B. Um, so A to B, what's going on here? Constant volume and the pressure's dropping. Okay, so, um, so essentially what's happening here is since we're at constant volume with the pressure dropping, we must be cooling, right? The gas must be cooling, right? Well, so if the gas cools at constant volume, let's see what we can learn from that. Well, first of all, work on the gas is zero because the volume stayed the same. Again, we didn't squeeze it and we didn't let it grow. So the work's got to be zero. Um, since um, the, gas, the gas was uh, losing pressure but staying at a constant volume, the only way to really arrange that is heat must be leaving. So Q in is negative because the heat left. Um, and then likewise, delta E then is negative. Um, because the sum of work on and Q in will give you the delta E. Well, if this you have negative plus zero, will give you negative. Uh, next one. On B to C, the volume is growing, so it's expanding. Gas is doing work on the surroundings, so the work on the gas is going to be negative. So this is an expansion at constant pressure is BC. Um, expansion at constant pressure. Well, a couple things we can learn from that then. As I mentioned, work on the gas is negative because it's growing against the environment. Um, now, what's funny with this is it expanded, but the pressure did not go down. So that's kind of weird. You let the gas expand, 
but the pressure didn't drop. Well, that means somebody's holding a flame under it or something. So the, the uh, heat flow in is positive. Um, and then finally, to get the, the change in internal energy, well, you went from a product of P and V being, I guess, 1 times 2 here, so 2, up to 3 times 2, or 6 here. So the product of P and V grew, so temperature went up, so delta E is positive. Um, two more. Um, for process CD, I went a little quick here, sorry. To go from C to D, um, at constant volume, the pressure grew. So apparently somebody's holding a flame under it again. Um, so the gas is being heated, but the volume's staying the same. Um, well, so can't be any work done because the volume stayed the same. Um, somebody's holding a flame under it, so the, work, the heat flow in is positive. Well, then the sum of these two, work on plus Q in, will give you the delta E, which then must be positive. Um, and then last one on D to A, we are squeezing it apparently because we had a big volume and now we got a little volume. Oh, okay, so we squeezed it. So that's definitely work on the gas. Um, so gas is being compressed at constant pressure. So we're squeezing it, so work on is going to be positive. Um, but oddly enough, when you squeezed it, the pressure didn't go up. Well, that means heat's got to be leaving. Gas must be cooling down. Um, that's, the, um, that's the only way around it. So that's why it's the case that, okay, we squeezed it, so the work on is positive. Um, the pressure did not climb, though, so heat must have left. So Q in is negative. Um, and then delta E can be a little tricky because, right, the sum of these two, positive plus negative, you, you just got to know kind of who wins. But the easiest way to get delta E is look purely at the temperature or the product of PV. So we went from a product of PV being, what is it, 3 times 3 or 9 here to 3 times to 1 times 3 or um, to 1 times 3, which is 3 here. So we went from a product of 9 to a product of 3. Um, here. Um, so that definitely means that the delta E is negative.